I jumped on the hype train even if a bit late and got myself the Wim Ultra around two months ago. I recorded unboxing and first impression and thought I would wait a week or two and then record more on the user experience. However, that two weeks turned out to be two months. Therefore, this video is really two parts. First is the unboxing and first impressions and then is the experience after using the device for around two months. I won't go through everything it is or it can do, which is a lot and there are plenty of videos doing that, so I'll just focus on the features I use. I got this to replace a Rune and Raspberry Pi as Rune endpoint. I don't really need Rune because I only use Tidal, I just have a small amount of local files, so I wouldn't want to pay for it anymore. One feature in Rune I liked was the parametric EQ, which the Swim has as well, and a subwoofer control and output was something in the Wim I'm looking forward to trying. And now the first part, unboxing and setup. That's the unit, it's quite light. It feels less premium than it looks like. It looks quite neat, smart. Here we have remote. What is this? It's like a banana plug. Oh, it may be for the record player ground. Remote, well, this feels cheap. Biodegradable bags. Yeah, they feel a bit same as your foot pin bags. It's a power cable, so it does have internal power supply, which is nice. This is more cables. This is like an RCA cable, HDMI, optical, which I have tons of already. User quick guide. It tells you to download the app and then the app guides you. So it's, it's really no information here. Okay, so this is the main unit. Mm, nice. And yeah, we have plenty of connectors. It looks like the, the lid is one piece and then the rest of the case, it just goes around. Probably screws under these pads. This knob, you can hear the noise. one of those things that when you see it like oh you you want to feel it that it must feel really really smooth nice but it feels a bit cheap which of course it's understandable i will use my own dock so i'm gonna connect the cox out ethernet cable and power and it's started there's no power, hard power switch. This is quite reflective. The okay, yeah, and now I need to download the install the app. It actually just went forward after I turned off the, the recording. It recognized the um, Ethernet connection and just came to this home screen. I'm recording this video with my phone, so I, I installed the app on my iPad. So let's see how this is gonna work. Okay, I want to use Bluetooth. Uh, okay, so it only sends audio to one port at a time. I didn't know that, so my dock is connected to coaxial out. Okay, there's an update. A few minutes later, the update is complete. 
okay i need to select a name i will just keep it now remote um yeah i was actually wondering the batteries were not included so i will need to go get batteries for the remote Okay, now we have remote. Auto measurement for audio path latency. I'm not gonna use any multi room audio, so I don't want to do this. Okay, yeah, I can, my DAC can use the higher sample rate and bits. I don't even have my amp on now. Yes, yes, I can hear it. Um. I don't really want to set up anything like this, at least for now. I think I want to keep the whole VMS test in my, my stereo setup. I don't want to use it with Alexa or anything else. Okay, there's been updates. Oh, well, it just updated. I don't know if it's doing something now or not. Let's have a quick check at the settings. Does the app settings um, device? Uh, okay, I guess this is the device settings. Um, EQ is something I will need. Um, parametric EQ. I have a very small room, I need some correction, at least one or two filters. That was one of the reasons why I, I got this device. I'm not going to use the automatic room correction, I may try it at some point, but I, I use my uh, separate microphone and a rev to, to measure and then just set up the filters here. I think I'm just going to use it now for a while and then then I will continue when I, I have a little bit better understanding how it works and what it can do and I can review some of the features. Okay, here I have the WIMP app on iPad now. This is the same phone app and it looks a lot nicer on phone because it doesn't scale nicely on iPad. Here are all the settings in the app. I'm only going to show now the ones I, I use, I find important. One of them is the EQ. You have two main EQ options. You have the graphic EQ and the parametric EQ. In the graphic, you have some predefined options here. And with the parametric, you need to give the filter type, peak, low self, high self, and frequency, and the gain, and the Q factor. One thing to keep in mind here is that every input has its own EQ. So for example, I use the line in when I connect my laptop with the Room EQ Wizard to the measurements, and then I set up the filters and then switch to Ethernet, which is your stream, streaming services to listen to music. And the filters, filters are not there unless I save them in the line in and then also apply in the Ethernet input. Right now, I only have one filter set up to tame a massive 100 Hertz boost. I also have DSP in my subwoofer, so the sub uh, filters are there. I have not tried the room correction yet where it, it, it uses your phone to do automatic correction. That's maybe a, a, a topic for another video. Okay, let's move on. The next one is audio settings. So here you can fix the output volume to maximum if you use external DAC with volume control. Then you have line out level selection. This is just another form of digital volume control. You can limit the volume like I've done here if I do something stupid. Then you have a, a resolution setting for the SPDIF outputs. And that's pretty much all the useful stuff here. Then it's the audio output. This is something I don't understand really why you can only choose one at a time. I, I would imagine that there's no technical restrictions to have the line out and the optical and coaxial out on at the same time. I don't know, maybe they have a te technical reason for it. And here you have the, the dark filter selection. I actually haven't tried if I if I hear any difference. I overall I find very difficult to hear the difference between digital filters. Some people say that they are obvious differences. 
So right now I'm using the Wim with the line out, have it connected direct to my power amplifier and subwoofer. First I had, I was using the Cox out to my own DAC, but when I got a subwoofer, it's easier now. I, I need to think of what's the longer term solution. Your audio input, you can select the input here with the app, or you can use of course remote or the front screen for that. And you can set some like gains, I think input specific gains here, line input resolution, and then there's some HDMI settings, but I only use the ethernet, which is basically all your streaming services or line in when I do rev measurements. So I don't really use the extra inputs. The next one is a subwoofer. That's a big feature. So first you enable or disable the sub output. Then you have a level adjustment, crossover frequency, which adds a low pass filter to the sub output and a high pass filter to the mains output. And that would be still nice to have two different selections for the frequency, but now it's, it's just one. What they did add recently were the two last settings here. Subwoofer bypass mode sends the whole bandwidth to the subwoofer without the low pass filter and the main speaker output base does the same for the mains output without the high pass filter. Then you have a polarity inversion, 0 180 degrees, and for accurate phase you would use the sync here where you can adjust the time delay, which is the same as phase effectively. So you have separate for subwoofer and the main, and here I've added 15 milliseconds for the main based on my measurements with rev, so uh, the subwoofer is a little bit further away than the main speakers and the sub has its own DSB that adds delays as well. So this was the, the result I got from my measurements. And next music playback with Tidal. Easy way to use Wim with Tidal is of course Tidal Connect. One thing with the phone and iPad app is that you don't have the selection of the output until you actually start playing something. First it starts playing with your iPad or phone speakers and then you can select the, the list of devices and the whim and then it works okay but so there's a little annoyance but I guess that's a title feature not whim feature. Another option to use your streaming service is inside the whim app so you have a list of things here and I actually hidden quite some already. Uh, here you can also have your own local music share. Uh, Spotify actually doesn't work here so it suggests you to open the Spotify app and use Spotify connect but Tidal you can operate it inside the Wim app so you get basically the same options you have, your saved um, albums or whatever. And then if you start playing from here, at least it starts playing on Wim immediately, not first your, uh, through your iPad or phone speakers. Unfortunately, this has been a very common site in the Wim app. This basically happens every day. I don't know if it's when the device goes on standby, but any evening when I start listening to music, it just cannot find the device. I have it connected with Ethernet cable. When I just unplug the cable and put it back in, then it finds it. Overall, besides the network issues, the Wim has worked well and it has done what I wanted it to do. It doesn't offer as polished or refined user experience as more premium hardware or software like Rune does. I like to have a display on my devices, but this one is quite small and the touchscreen offers little functionality. In reality, you always need to have the app. We also must acknowledge that Weem has been doing a great job with their app and they are very responsive, adding new features and firmware updates regularly. It is such a great feature to tweak your room response EQ while sitting in a listening position. And that's it for now. I may do another video on some features, but next week we will have a peek inside the Wim. So please subscribe and thank you for watching.